Okay, so I'm uh, going to present for you the newborn behavioral observation system that we work with in Norway and we are testing out an individualized and both training and supervision program in Norway. Um, uh, the NBO is infant-focused and family-centered. It's a relationship-based, structured neurobehavioral observation which enables infant specialists and family workers to describe and interpret newborn behavior for parents. The infant's behavior is at the center of this shared observation with parents and the clinician uses the NBO to sensitize the parent to the baby's behavior. The behavior is the infant's language, to learn the baby's language. And the NBO focuses on strength and resources in the infant. It uh, focuses on the competent infant, the social infant. And the NBO, um, is a uh, development from the newborn behavioral assessment scale that was developed in the early 1970s by Dr. Barry Brasselton. Uh, so that was an assessment scale. And later on, they used the NBAS with infants and their families more as a clinical tool. And now in um, 2005 or 2007, we had this uh, manual for the NBO, which was developed by Dr. Kevin Nugent and his colleagues at uh, the Boston, at the Brasselton Institute in Boston. So the NBO, it builds on more than 30 years of research uh, in this field. So there are two clinical windows into the newborn. The key to become a good observer is to use the behavioral states, talk about the behavioral states in the infants and the AMOR system, the developmental system of behavioral organization of the newborn infant. I guess you all know these six behavioral states, so this is what we have to train to, to have this, um, to talk about the different states and also, oh, sorry. <laughs> This always happens, I don't know why. Uh, the developmental agenda for the newborn, the armor system. And um, the first part of it is uh, about uh, autonomic regulation. To read all these signals of autonomic regulation. The second part is the motor system. How the motor system, how the infant organize the motor behavior. The third part is the states how the infant is organizing her states. And the fourth part is uh, the infant's abili ability to respond to human faces and to uh, interact with families. So we say that the newborn need support. It he needs other regulation and this armor system needs amor, which is, it needs love. Uh, the newborn infant needs environmental support from caregivers, other regulation to achieve emotion regulation. So it's all about emotion regulation. Providing individualized support is the key. And, and BO is used to help parents achieve this level of individualized care for their infants. The main goals of NBO is to sensitize parents to their infants' capabilities and individuality. Again, focus on strength and resources. Second, to strengthen the relationship, the emotional bond, to start the early attachment process between parents and their infant. And third, to promote a positive relationship between the clinician and the family. The primary target group for the NBO are all new parents and newborns uh, with gestational age 35 weeks or higher and up to three months of age. 
but of course it's possible to adapt the NBO to different target groups. The NBO observation item summary will look at habituations to light and sound, muscle tone in legs and arms and activity levels, reflexes and motor behavior, rooting, sucking, hand grasp, pull to sit and crawling, visual and auditory responsiveness, face and voice, the red ball, the rattle, crying and consolability and self-regulation. So how is this NBO training organized in Norway? Uh, I first then have to tell you more about the National Network for Infant Mental Health in Norway. Uh, um, we got a license from the Brasselton Institute to offer NBO training in Norway uh, since 2012. And this National Network for Infant Mental Health was funded by the Norwegian Directorate of Health and was established in 2006. Uh, our main activity is postgraduate education in infant mental health, training and research. Our goal is to implement best practice and ensure high quality training for all health practitioners that work with infants and families. And in this network, both clinicians and researchers work together to build bridge between research and the practice field. And one of our main goals was to promote healthy development from the very beginning of life. Identify high risk pregnant women and their partners and offer help and support. And offer early intervention to infants, zero to three years and their parents. And we thought that NBO could be a good starter. So we have developed a national uh, NBO trainer team. With, it's a multi-professional team, always two trainers together when we offer training. And who we put together depends on the participants who's going to be trained. I'm the head of the trainer team. I was trained in NBAS in 1992 and NBO 2010. We have Uni Tranos Vanabo, who's here today as well. She's a national coordinator, public health nurse. Uh, we have clinical psychologists, nurses specialized in NICU, um, and people who are trained in NIDCAP. So I think it's important that they either have are NBAS trained or trained in NIDCAP, and then they have NBO um, too. So how is training organized? Uh, we started with the US model and we have developed a Norwegian model after having got some experiences. The NBO training from the Brasselton Center is uh, based on one and a half to two days training by, teach by two teachers and maximum 25 participants. The content of the training is teach teaching, watching videos, role-playing with dolls, and to observe one live NBO. And there's no practice uh, uh, without their practice, but without any supervision after these two days training. And certification criteria is five written NBO evaluations of five infants with an evaluation form from the infant's parents as well, to hear their voices. How was this for you? Uh, we offered three standard NBO trainings in 2012 with doctors Kevin Nugent and Christy Brandt as teachers. Uh, we announced the training on our website and Questback evaluation showed very high satisfaction by the participant. They said it was excellent teachers and highly relevant content. However, few were certified within six months, which was the plan. So, it was silent from the participants. Why was that? We interviewed some of the participants. We asked what has happened. And what they told us is that I got a lot of new knowledge. I reached new understanding, but not sufficient new skills to practice. Two days is not enough. The majority had a great wish to practice and impl implement the NBO in their own practice. But they said, I felt so lonely when I went back to my workplace. I was the only participant from my workplace at the course. 
and they also said we got little support and encouragement. My leader know little or nothing about the NBO, and there is no plan for practicing new skills or for implementation at my workplace. There's a great need for supervision or coaching. I wish I could have a mentor or supervisor. So, after having these feedbacks, we decided to develop a new training model. So this is our Norwegian model. Uh, it now consists of five days training and supervision on site, uh, lasting a period of nine months, so pregnancy. So we start, do the same as they do at the, from the Brasselton Institute, two days introduction to the NBO, teaching, show videos, role play with dolls, introduction to Fronter with a web-based uh, classroom system. And after this two days introduction, we have six weeks of practice. People go back to the workplace, they practice, and they're writing short NBO logs weekly, send it in to us as teachers. We read them and we, re we give feedback. Every week they get feedback of their experiences practicing the NBO. And we meet again six weeks later, one day group supervision, participants share videos showing themselves practicing and go with families. And after this day, they have six new weeks practicing and continue writing short and BO logs and receiving feedback from us as trainers. And one day new group supervision videos again, and then six months practicing, log once per now, receive feedback, and then they start to complete the five NBO cases for the certification. Recording of infant responses and parent feedback. And then we meet again nine months later, after the two days introduction, and we have supervision, sharing experiences around implementation, supervision, and handing out certificates and celebrating. So this is the model. How do we reach out? Information about the NBO on our website, on conferences, on seminars. And what we tell is what is NBO, what is the content for who, target group of infants and parents, both full term and different groups of at risk infants, both typical parents and parents with anxiety or depression or other mental health problems. And we put together a trainer team that have the right competency for the target group. The content and the training, expectation and practice, we think it's so important to communicate all these issues before they come for training. We offer on-site training, maximum 25 participants. The price depends uh, for the uh, on the training depends if there's a unit on the hospital who asks for training. Um, we take about 9,500 9, euros. Um, but if there are a single person coming in for training, we take about 600 euros for these five days training. Each participant received the NBO manual and the NBO kit. So what have we learned? We have learned that we need to plan the training. The preparation phase is so important. And the preparation phase, it takes three to six months. Uh, we have it, people are contacting us. They say that we want to enroll training. Um, we have phone calls, emails. We have meetings with the decision makers face to face. So we ensure top down anchoring information about the content and, and the goal of the NBO, the training and supervision, five days on school and lots of daily weekly practice, criteria for certification, this web-based classroom that we use with interactive communication, and we have to make sure that leaders make a realistic plan for time to practice, and the leader's role as motivator, and the leader should also select the right persons for the training, especially for the first training in their unit. 
Uh, and they, the leader also has the responsibility to provide detailed information about the training process. What is expected from each of you? Handouts and slides from the trainer team. Dialogue with the group, how to succeed with the training. So bottom-up anchoring. So when the participants come for the training, they know what it is all about. Um, and we have written concept and agreement of price. So, yeah. So this is the classroom, web-based classroom system that we use. So they don't get any handouts. Everything is on this web-based classroom. So here they can find all the PowerPoints. They find films. Um, here is where we communicate with each of the participants. And before they come to the training, they also are uh, asked to read three pa three side pages uh, about the NBO and answer some key questions. What is NBO all about? So they have started to have an idea of what is it. And during uh, these nine months, they get reminders, encouragements. We send SMS, emails. So we're trying really to support, be with them. And these two NBO logs every week, they are very important. We have five questions that they have to ask. Have you done your two NBO these weeks? Yes or no? If no, why is that? So we could have an idea what's the struggle. And who did you observe who was in the room with you? Mother, father, other people? Which of the 15 items and bow items did you observe? How was it for you? How was it for the parents? So we get an idea of where they are in their learning process. They get feedback on all logs each week and new teaching goals each week, depending on what they tell us. And what the feedback they give is that it's very motivating and helpful. They say it's highlights of the week to read these logs. Who are the participants so far? We have a lot of nurses coming in for training from NICU, maternity wards, well baby clinics, mi uh, midwives, psychologists, pediatric physiotherapists, and some few child psychiatrists and pediatricians. How do we recruit new trainers and train trainers? We started with two uh, trainers, but we really need to develop this trainer team. So we always look for new excellent NBO observers or persons that are trained in NEEDCAP or NBAS to see if they can join the, the trainer team. Um, new trainers receive all of our PowerPoints, films, etc., and Word documents about all training goals, trainer responsible, responsibility. And the new candidate follow one complete training process. We are role models, and the new trainer do part of the teaching and gets supervision. So how to achieve sustainability? We have some ideas. We have tested it out. Uh, we write newsletters. We haven't decided yet how often. Um, annual meetings to share experiences. Uh, we would like to recruit two superb NBO trainers from each training that can be offered some extra supervision with the aim to provide support and encouragement in their unit and have them supervise new colleagues in their unit. I think that would be very important to do. So our goal, dream for the future, to offer seamless services to all new parents, that all new parents get an NBO at the hospital, either in NICU, repeated NBO observations, or and in the maternity ward, NBO at the home visits offered by public health nurses or midwives, and repeated NBOs during the first three months of the health checkups at the World Baby Clinics. That would be a nice way to, to learn about their infant and follow the infant's um, growth. Okay, thanks for your attention.